Hello, this is Joe and welcome back to the channel. You know, today is going to be a very exciting video for me because I have really wanted this low focal length telescope for so long. And every time I go to find a telescope in the 250 to 350 range, it always seems to come with the helical focuser. And oddly enough, OPT had reached out to me like they read my mind or something and asked if I wanted to review ASCAR's latest offering of the FRA 300 Pro. And the coolest part about it is, is that it has a rack and pinion focuser on it, which I really prefer. OPT was kind enough to send me one to review. Uh, I get 30 days with this guy and I am going to really run it through its paces. The first target that I'm gonna go for tonight uh, if the clouds remain clear and the wind dies down a little bit, is going to be the Elephant's Trunk Nebula. Okay, so I've got this set up now on my CEM120 mount, and uh, you'll notice a few things that I've done already. Uh, I went ahead and I placed the electronic autofocuser on the telescope. Uh, it was super easy to do. It took me less than five minutes. Uh, you'll also notice that I removed the dovetail bar and I put a Lozmandy bar on. That is only because uh, I needed it to fit on the CEM120. And the reason that I'm using the CEM120 with this scope, uh, I wanna make perfectly clear that this scope only weighs about five pounds. Uh, it's 2.26 kilograms. And there's no reason whatsoever why I could not run this on my EQ6R, or you could probably run it on just about any mount or even some star trackers, to be completely honest. But the reason, um, there's a couple reasons that I'm running it on the CEM120 instead, mainly because it's my main mount and it's all tied into the observatory. And because of that, I can set it up and I have to get up for work at 5 a.m. So by doing it this way, I can make sure that everything's looking good and then I can go to sleep uh, so that I can get up and go to work in the morning. Uh, if I set it up on my uh, on my other mount here, the EQ6R Pro, I would have to take it outside and polar align it, and make sure everything's working, uh, worry about the wind, uh, which doesn't seem that it's going to be dying down anytime soon. But basically, that's one of the main reasons why I've decided to go ahead and, and put it on my main mount. So let's go over some other things that I've done here. I've added my William Optics guide scope. This actually uh, was paired with my Z81 and I had taken it off of there and decided to go ahead and put it on this for tonight. And it, it goes on real nice, real easy. So if you've already got a, a, an easy guide scope, man, that, that handle that doubles as a guide scope holder is really nice. Um, the CNC machine finish on here is really nice as well. Um, I don't know if you can make this out here. This ring uh, is really nice and it's just got a great feel to it. I, I can't really describe it. Um, it's not quite like William Optics. It's, it's slightly different, um, but it's I mean, it's similar and it feels pretty good I and mean, it feels really good. And the finish on here feels really good as well. The other cool feature that I'm really liking and I've already utilized is this ring here. Uh, it's uh, basically a manual rotator and it rotates your camera 360 degrees or however you'd like it. Now, of course, because I'm on this pig mount, I can only um, go so far in either direction without my... Uh, 
electronic focus wheel hitting hitting into the mount but this is actually perfect where i have it right now because i've got the motor of the uh, electronic uh, filter wheel on this side to counteract the and balance from having the electronic autofocuser on this side Another feature I've noticed so far on this too is that it's got a little finder scope holder which you probably wouldn't really necessarily use for a finder scope. You could actually um, either put the guide scope in here and then up here you could mount um, your little nook or um, your ASI or Pro or whatever you're using to image with or maybe a control box or vice versa. You could probably mount that here with a little dovetail bar. Um, and then put the guide scope up there. So that's kind of nice too, that they've they've added another little extra spot to to mount things to, because uh, in all honesty, this is really a, a portable, This is, I think it's meant to be portable, and you can take this out into the field, into the dark sky site, and that's the way that we're set up for the night. I am going to be using the ZWO 2600 MM Pro with it and the Antlia 36 millimeter SHO filters. I also wanted to mention the backspacing on here because it's a quintuplet and the Petsful design allows for you to pretty much have a minimum and a maximum back focus that's really, really large. Um, when the focuser is all the way in, uh, I believe it depends on, on which connection you're using. I'm using the M48 to M42 connector. Um, it does have an M42 connector with it and an M54 as well. But this is the way I was already set up. What I did was is I just took this camera straight off, even with the connector off my reducer of the Z81 and placed it directly on to the telescope. And I should have perfect back focus because when this is in all the way, I think you can go in as far as, uh, or you can go out as far as 71 millimeters. And when it's out all the way, I think you can go in as few as 49 millimeters. So 55 should be just fine. Um, the focuser is not really gonna go move too much because again, we're wide field and most of my filters are par focal. Now, if you've got a color camera, you really don't have to worry about almost any of that. And you could pretty much fit this almost, uh, any way you want within the 49 to 71 millimeters of back focus. So that part's really nice as well. And I did want to mention that I do have this extra little weight on here. This wasn't needed. I just put it on so that I can eat more easily counterbalance the telescope on this giant mount. Um, if you notice the, my weight down here is just about ready to hit the, the bottom of the mount. So I need to be able to, um, drop this weight down just a little bit more. I mean, this is definitely not a good pairing <laughs> to have a giant mount like this with this tiny little um, baby telescope on it. Um, but again, it is what I'm gonna use tonight and I feel very confident that I'm gonna get some great images and, and I know I'll get some good guiding off of this thing. So very quickly, I did wanna show the stacks of data that I got from night one of imaging. And here's the oxygen. Here's the sulfur. I'm liking a lot of the detail I'm seeing right now. And here is the hydrogen alpha, which I'm really uh, impressed with this detail that I'm getting out of a stack of just 12 sub exposures. Last night went surprisingly well, given that we have a full super moon out. And uh, I'm hoping that I can duplicate everything that I did last night tonight. And then I'm going to call it enough on the elephant's trunk nebula and go ahead and get an image out for you guys that I'll be showing at the end of this video here in a minute. I did want to thank OPT for sending me this. I really do appreciate it. And I want you to know that I am having a blast testing it so far. I know it's only been one day and one night, but I'm just, I'm already having a, a, just a ton of fun. And I also wanted to thank all of my channel members who support my channel. Uh, I really do appreciate you guys and all of my channel members are going to get all of the raw masters that I do collect from the FRA 300 Pro so that you can play around with it as however you want. Uh, if you have any questions uh, about the FRA 300 Pro, please go ahead and put them in the comments below. Also, uh, tell me what you think about the scope in the comments below and of course if you like the image.